Okay, so we know steatosis is essentially when we have accumulation of fat within the liver. Now, this obviously can lead to steohepatitis, when we have inflammation and the accumulation of fat. And both these states are actually fatty liver diseases, because we have a lot of fat in the liver, and it's a disease. But there are actually two types of fatty liver diseases. We have the alcoholic fatty liver disease, and we have the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Are abbreviated NAFLD. Obviously the alcoholic fatty liver disease is because of alcohol consumption. Because what happens is when we have too much ethanol, ethanol can be converted to acetylaldehyde by the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. NAD is reduced to NADH. Acetylaldehyde can then convert to acetic acid by the enzyme aldehyde dehydrogenase. NAD is also reduced to NADH here, so now we have two NADHs. Acetic acid can then convert to acetyl-CoA, and with acetyl-CoA, which is the main precursor to fatty acid, it can basically synthesize more fatty acids within the liver, and so we have a lot of fatty acids within the liver. So you have to know that with a lot of acetyl-CoA, it can produce a lot of fatty acids. So essentially, for alcohol fatty liver disease, the hepatocellular steatosis results from 1. The excess reduced nicotinamide dinucleotide, the, the NADHs that were formed, which causes shunting of normal substrate from metabolism and towards instead lipid synthesis. Because if you know in biochemistry, if you have a lot of NADHs, well, essentially, you need NADHs to make fatty acids. So with a lot of NADHs, it will essentially tell the body to make a lot of fatty acids. Two, um, hepatocellular steatosis results from impaired assembly and secretion of lipid proteins. So essentially, just the lipids accumulate in the liver. And this is because lipoproteins can't take lipids out of the liver. And so just, yeah, just lipids accumulate in the liver. And three, there is increased peripheral catabolism of fats, so we can form a gut. Now let's look at the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, abbreviated NAFLD. Because it says non-alcoholic, this tends to be diet-induced. But essentially, it's where the same thing happens. We have fatty acids in the liver, fatty acid accumulation in the liver, which makes fatty liver disease. So what causes this? Well, we can have a high intake of dietary fats. Also, fructose, for example, can cause fatty acids in the liver. There is higher fat uptake within the liver. There is reduced fat secretion from the liver. And, there's, and so there's increased storage of triglycerols in the liver. And there is also reduced secretion of lipoproteins, which causes fatty acids in the liver. So as you can see, all of these causes, potential causes, are non-alcoholic induced. But let's look at the high intake of dietary fats. Why fructose? How does fructose cause accumulation of fatty acids in the liver? Let's take a look at a biochemical map starting from fructose to understand why it causes accumulation of fatty acids, potentially. So non-alcoholic liver disease can be caused by the increased dietary intake of fructose. Fructose can convert to fructose 1-phosphate by the enzyme fructokinase, the phosphate obtained from ATP. Fructose 1-phosphate can then split in two to form glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate by the enzyme fructose 1-phosphate aldolase. Now let's just look at one of these molecules. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate, if you remember, is uh, part of the glycolysis step. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate can also actually convert to glycerol 3 phosphate. With the enzyme glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase, NADH is, is oxidized to NAD. Glycerol 3 phosphate can then become or convert to phosphatidic acid. It can convert to phosphatidic acid when two fatty acid groups are added. These fatty acid groups are acyl-CoA. They are added with the enzyme acyl-transferase. So acyl-CoA's are fatty acids, essentially. 
phosphatidic acid can then convert to diacylglycerols and then triacylglycerols if it wants to. And this is what we see in uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, accumulation of fatty acids and triacylglycerols, right? So where do these fatty acids come from, these acyl-CoA's that get added here? Well, surprisingly enough, they also come from fructose. What happens is glyceraldehyde can convert to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by the enzyme triokinase, the phosphate obtained from ATP. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate can actually also uh, convert to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by the enzyme triphosphoisomerase. Anyway, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is also part of glycolysis, if you remember. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate through glycolysis, through the end step of glycolysis, can become pyruvate. And then pyruvate can con convert to acyl-CoA. And then acyl-CoA can then, through fatty acid synthesis, become acyl-CoA, which are fatty acids. So acyl-CoA can make fatty acids, that is, acyl-CoA. So you can see how fructose can do all these things and essentially um, stimulate the production of fatty acids and triacylglycerols. To add to this, glyceraldehyde can actually also convert to glycerol by the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase, NADH, uh, hydrogen, well glyceraldehyde is reduced to glycerol. And then glycerol can then convert to glycerol 3-phosphate with the enzyme glycerol kinase, phosphate obtained from ATP. And then the, the steps continue on to form fatty acids or phosphatidic acids, diacylglycerols or triacylglycerols. So fructose essentially has a big role, potential role in developing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and the development of it. Now to add to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, metabolic syndrome is one of the most common causes of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Metabolic syndrome is a collective name um, used to denote a number of serious uh, diseases or health conditions resulting in serious fatty acid accumulation in the liver. These are central obesity, hypertension, dyslipidemia, impaired glucose tolerance, as well as insulin resistance. To have metabolic syndrome, you only need three out of the five. And that concludes the video on fatty liver disease. So you can see how from a healthy liver, if we abuse alcohol and take it, or we have an unhealthy diet, it can lead to some conditions, steatosis, and then it can lead to steatohepatitis with inflammation. These are all fatty liver diseases. And finally, it can lead to cirrhosis. Now, I haven't talked much about cirrhosis, but in the next video, I'll hopefully provide a link here. And it will focus mainly on cirrhosis and how bad it is. Also, I didn't really talk about much about liver fibrosis, but we'll look at it more in the next video. Liver fibrosis is essentially when the liver produces, some of the liver cells produces too much extracellular matrix can, proteins, uh, collagen for example, and then this collagen gets deposited within the liver causing stiffening, etc.